Captain's Wax program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's new water repellent glow coat present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, Dick LeGrand, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the Kingsman and Billy Mills Orchestra. Tonight, I'd like to make one thing clear to everybody. There is only one glow coat. It's the water-repellent new glow coat that's on your dealer's shelves right now. There's been no change in the familiar glow coat container, but wait till you find out about the wonderful change inside. For it is a wonderful thing to be able to cover your floors with a self-polishing floor wax that is positively water-repellent. Now, the big thing from your standpoint is that it'll last so much longer without losing its smooth, lustrous shine. Water that's dripped or spilled on it can be wiped right off without leaving an ugly streak or spot. You can damp mop glow coat protected floors over and over without killing the protection or the shine. You get more for your money now in Johnson's glow coat than ever before. More beauty, more protection, more freedom from floor care drudgery. Guaranteed the most economical self-polishing wax you can buy. Its protective shine lasts up to four times longer. Get water repellent, new glow coat tomorrow. <laughs> In 1649, a Dutchman named Rembrandt took some oils, some brushes, some canvas, and some talent and turned out a lot of masterpieces. In 1949, a fellow in Wistful Vista got out the card table, loaded it down with art materials, and started to make his own Christmas cards. (laughs) The sound of the gong was so we could avoid mentioning the two artists in the same breath. Because one of them is Mr. McGee of Fibber McGee and Molly. Oh, boy, I sure wish I'd have thought of this before, Molly. Look at the money I'd have saved if I'd have made my own Christmas cards every year. How's this look, kiddo? My first one. Let me see. Hmm. Very interesting. Isn't it, though? Too bad you had to spill that big blob of red paint all over it. What do you mean, big blob of red paint? That's Sandy Claus. It's his? Where's his beard? That's the whole idea of the card. He ain't got any beard. Sandy Claus with no beard? Why, certainly. He's just coming out of the barbershop. <laughs> the verse is going to say, St. Nicholas had his beard cut off as up on the roof his reindeers trample. Because how can a guy with whiskers on show little shavers a good example? <laughs> oh, McGee, that's cute. Oh, shucks. I got a million ideas as good as that. Or better. Well, I should hope so. Huh? Among your many good ideas, have you got one about how to get that India ink out of the rug? Oh, I'll clean up here when I get through. I ain't quite used to handling all this stuff, but I'll learn, Tootsie. I'll learn. My gosh, I'll bet Somerset Mogham didn't learn to paint overnight either. <laughs> Somerset Maugham is a, is a novelist, dearie, not a painter. Oh, he gave it up, huh? <laughs> Couldn't stand the gaff, eh? Well, believe me, I'm staying right with it. I got tenacity. I got grit. I got perseverance. You have something else, too. I have? Yes, you have a jar of blue paint dripping into your lap. Huh? Oh, oh, my gosh. I must have tripped it over with my elbow. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there. Shucks. That was my only jar of blue paint. <laughs> I'll have to paint the rest of the reindeer with brown eyes. You've been painting reindeer with blue eyes? Why not? A good question. <laughs> For all I know, reindeer might... Come in. Oh, it is out on the mayor, McGee. Come in, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Molly. Hello, McGee. Hi, Latrev. Well, you must be having a circus with those watercolors. You certainly look like a clown. <laughs> if you're referring to the pigment so plentifully permeating my pretty puss, Politico, it is purely a product of my poster paints and my peculiar pictorial proclivities. <laughs> Are you through, dearie, or shall I open up another can of peas? <laughs> I'm through. No kidding, Latrib. This artwork is a great little hobby. It gets your mind off of things. Oh, I didn't know you ever had yours on anything. 
But I agree that a hobby is a fine thing. My secretary collects stamps. Has she a valuable collection, Mr. Mayor? She must have. I buy about $50 worth a week, and I can never find one around the office. I think she must be papering a bedroom with them. If she doesn't like the results, she can always mail the house to some relative. I come by my artistic talent kind of natural, Latriv. It's hereditary. My Uncle Sycamore was an artist. Hmm. Uncle Sycamore? Oh, yes. You had an interesting family tree. Oh, yes. A squirrel's idea of heaven, I imagine. I didn't know your Uncle Sycamore was an artist, McGee. Portrait or landscape? Mail pouch tobacco. <laughs> Painted it on barns, fences, and silos. You got any hobbies, Latriv? Yes. She sells. Oh, you mean seashells, don't you, uh, Your Honor? No. No? No. My housekeeper is always selling raffle tickets for something, and I have to buy whatever she sells. <laughs> Be kind of interesting sometime if she sells tickets on some seashells. Well, any time she sells seashells, she'll sell the seashells to somebody else. Because if she sees that she can sell me seashells, <laughs> she'll sell the... Hmm. What's the matter, Your Honor? I'll have to change the subject. My bridge work is coming loose. <laughs> anyway, I have to be going. I can find my way out, Molly. Don't trouble to... No, no, me. Mr. Mayor, not that. No, no, no that's all. <laughs> And she wore a yellow ribbon. Christmas card's going to take, McGee. Mm -hmm. The way the paint is thrown around in here, it looks like Sherwin had a fight with William. <laughs> My dear girl, a true artist is not concerned with such trivial things. When one is creating, one thinks only of putting one's best work into one's work. You seen the pot of glue? Yes, you're putting your best elbow in it. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I felt that a while ago, but I thought it was just the red paint. Hey, look at this card I just designed for Mort Toops. Not only wishes him a Merry Christmas, but carries a thoughtful little message, too. Something sentimental, I suppose, like go boil your head. <laughs> Here it is, picture of a fish. 
You see, fish is swimming through a sprig of mistletoe. A fish and mistletoe? Yeah. The verse says, I hope the fish I hereby show recalls the fin I loaned you last July. And though he swims through mistletoe, I ain't going to kiss that fin goodbye. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> you like it? Well, five dollars is always a nice touch if you can't get ten. <laughs> but that's what I said. Hey, come in. Oh, it's Oli from the Elks Club. Come in, boy. Well, hello, Mrs. Hello, McGee. What's the mess, Mrs.? Well, himself here is making his own Christmas cards, heaven help me. Yep, personalized handmade Christmas cards, Oli. None of that run-of-the-mill stuff for me this year. I painted every one of these babies with my own hands. Well, maybe they wouldn't look so messy if you painted them with a brush, McGee. <laughs> well, he did use a brush, Ole. He means that... Hey, he... I might not do so bad with just my bare hands at that, Ole. You've heard of finger painting, haven't you? Oh, sure. My daughter, Christina, she makes good money with finger painting. Yeah? What does she paint? Well, what would a finger painter paint, McGee? Feet? She paints fingers, of course. She's... <laughs> She's a lady curious. You mean a manicurist, Oli? Me and the missus, we don't like Christina holding hands with the men. She used paints fingers on ladies. Have you done any of your Christmas shopping yet, Oli? And say, what are you going to give your wife this year? Well, my missus is always a problem. Every year for Christmas, she wants something sensible. But I want to give her foolishness. And you're right, boy, you're right. That's what Christmas is for. Sure. But this year, though, she changes. Yeah? This time, she wants foolishness, too. Oh, and such foolishness. Oh. <laughs> what does she want, Oli? A diamond necklace or a mink? No, she drops hints by the kids so that they say, this year, Mama wants for Christmas a dyed rabbit. Well, now a dyed rabbit is very nice, I think. Yeah. So, I make a deal with the pet shop. The first rabbit that dies, I give it to my mother. <laughs> It's a good thing I keep on talking while I'm working, or working while I'm talking, or I'd never get finished. I got some beautiful cards here, Molly. They weren't so messy. Mm -hmm. Now, you take this one for the mayor, for instance. Kind of a symbolic card, see? You get it? The picture of the pork barrel with a hand in it? That's lovely. That's about as subtle as a blackjack. I didn't realize I was so loaded with ideas, so productive, so specific. Not specific, dearie. You mean prolific. Oh, I do. <laughs> I'm afraid you're thinking of that stale movie at the Bijou, my dear. <laughs> the one that the ad claims it's colossal, it's stupendous, it's pro prolific. That's terrific, McGee. Thanks. <clears throat> I think it's a nice card myself. <laughs> it's got that certain something that you can't... Hello, Molly. May I come in? Hi, pal. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Welcome to the McGee Greeting Card and House Wrecking Company. Pull up a chair, Junior, if you can find one without any paint on it. And watch a Julius at work. Thank you, pal. I'll stand. Hey, uh, this is very interesting stuff to me, kid. I used to work in a greeting card place, you know. I didn't know that, Mr. Wilcox. Sure, I designed Christmas cards. Modernistic stuff. You mean modernistic stuff like a picture of a fried egg draped over a half moon under a watch with a woman's face with roller skates for ears? And it says, onions are for love? You mean that stuff? Yes, yes. I was kind of a dilly-dally. Oh, Matter of fact, I designed a beautiful card for myself this morning, kid. Really, Mr. Wilcox? <laughs> sure, I just flashed a card with a lot of colors, you see. Then I drew a picture of Santa Claus carrying an umbrella and a rubber band. Looks terrific. That's supposed to mean something? Why, certainly, pal. Look, take the colors on the card, you see. They simply stand for the colors the Johnson self-polishing glow coat restores to your worn and faded oh, linoleum. Oh, of all the dirty waste of stink. Then the umbrella. The umbrella. That means the new glow coat is water repellent. Yes, sir. This great new discovery, Johnson's new self-polishing water-repellent glow coat, is the one floor wax at last that does not smear and show drab dull spots when you wipe up spill things with a damp cloth or mop it with a damp mop. Yes, and you have no idea of what that means to a housewife like myself, Mr. Wilcox. The heck he don't. He's now, not... you hush, McGee. You know, I don't have to wax my floors nearly as often with the new glow coat since it's water repellent. That's right, Molly, because when you mop up dirt and spill things, you don't mop up the wax. It stays on and it stays bright even after repeated moppings. 
That's why I drew the rubber band on my cart. Because your work is a snap when you use the new water repellent glow. <laughs> and hey, pal, pal, the Santa Claus is me. The way I look to a housewife when she learns how much work she saves with Johnson's new water repellent glow coat because it lasts so much longer. Hey, hey, look, Does, hey, hey, uh, hey, look, Waxy. Yes, pal. How long did you work in that Christmas card place? About an hour and a half, pal. Huh? The fellow who owned the place made a crack about my drawings that I didn't like, so I left. Oh, independent, eh? What'd he say to you? Wilcox, he said, you're fired. <laughs> so I left. Like this, kid. Sensitive kid. Look, sweetheart, uh, why don't you give up designing Christmas cards, too? If Mr. Wilcox could do it, you can do it. Just say to yourself, I can give it up. I will give it up. I... What are you doing with the yardstick? Trying to draw a picture of the Shah of Persia. With no curves, just angles, you know. It's just an experiment. But why no curves? Well, I know I can't draw a straight line with a ruler, so I wanted to see if I could draw a ruler with a straight line. <laughs> you see, my dear, when an artist... Hold it, kiddo, hold it. Come in. Oh, McGee, it's Dr. Gamble. Hello, doctor. Hi, tonsil burglar. Hello, Molly. Good day to you, smear face. What are you doing, dying Easter eggs? He's painting his own Christmas cards this year, doctor. This year? Seems like this has been going on for 300 years. <laughs> Pull up your stomach and sit down, microbe merchant. <laughs> You're looking at Wistful Vista's answer to Courier and Hives. <laughs> well, I couldn't think of a nastier answer. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Right. Praise from you is praise indeed. <laughs> well, I must have missed the line someplace. <laughs> But give the boy credit for effort, Doctor. You'll have to admit he's trying. Admit it. I accuse him of it. He's very trying. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You guys got to have a hobby, hasn't he? What's your hobby? Needlework. Roll up your sleeve and I'll show you. Oh, no. <laughs> Nothing doing. You get under my skin without any extra equipment. <laughs> what are you staring at my vest for? Just noticing how full it is, stuffy. Can't button the bottom button anymore, can you? Well, gee whiz, I get hungry. I exercise a lot, Doc. A guy that exercises... Yes, yes he does, Doctor. He mm. exercises harder with a knife and fork than anybody I know. <laughs> well, looking at you, Goonsboro, and your little round hand-painted tummy has inspired me to a little Christmas poem myself. Yeah? Maybe you can use it on one of your cards. Gee, you made one up just sitting here? Uh -huh. Let's hear it, Doctor. Oh, yes, let's. All right. Christmas is a time of cheer to think of the colorful friends we've got. Like little Buckle Buster here. He is the rainbow at the end of the pot. So long, now. The King's Man and Little Teeny tell the story of Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. This is the story of a reindeer. A super extraordinary reindeer. He wasn't what a reindeer ought to be, for he had one peculiarity. Go on, Teeny, do tell him. Okay, fella, I'll tell him. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose, and if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer game. On one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa Claus lost his way. Then he cried. Without a light, old Saint Nick can't ride tonight. Just then along came Rudolph. Galloping, 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 galloping through the stormy night. Lighting the way before him. With his little nose so bright. Santa Claus shouted, Rudolph, please guide us on our way. And the reindeer shouted, Rudy, come along, we'll let you play. So Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen and Common and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen away. Never mind, Rudolph. Tote that sleigh. Hey, 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 Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Santa will find his way to you. Cause Rudy's equipped with red 
dark, too. Tune off the red dog reindeer. Twinkle, twinkle on your way. Everybody loves that reindeer. Cause Rudolph saves the day. For little children. Yes, Rudolph the red nosed reindeer is here to stay. Certainly making the shambles of this living room. Mm. Paint and ink all over everything. Why don't you give it up? My dear, did Da Vinci give up? Did Piscassio give up? <laughs> did Somerset Maugham give up? I told you before, Somerset Maugham is not an artist. He's an author. He's an author. I'm an author and an artist. Who wrote that wonderful little Christmas verse? It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, we could smell Uncle Dennis. He was such an old South. <laughs> that? I did, five years ago. That was the night Uncle Dennis came home. Now, and... now, now. Look at this card I designed. Mm-hmm. See it? But you drew the figure too large. The hands and the feet are clear off the page. I know it. I've done that on purpose. This one is for old McDonald at the Third National Bank. But why did you make the picture so out of proportion? I wanted him to see how it feels to be overdrawn. <laughs> Look, how many cards have you finished? Well, as soon as I finish this one and two more, I'll have three. <laughs> kind of discouraging at that, but it's going smoother now. I'm getting the knack. Oh, McGee, watch it. There goes the ink. Oh, uh, do something, sweetheart. Huh? Don't just sit there and watch it pour out onto the floor. It ain't going onto the floor. It's running down my pants into my shoe. <laughs> All I gotta do is set here till it dries, and then I can get up and walk. Oh, dear. Come in. Hello there, daughter. Hello, Johnny. Oh, hi, old timer. What are you making the Christmas cards for? Christmas? <laughs> well, the way I'm laying eggs with them, I think I'll use them for Easter. Where's your girlfriend, Bessie, Mr. Old Timer? Isn't she with yeah. you? Yeah. No, daughter. Bessie's working down at the carnival. Me and her had a little falling out. Had a fight, eh? Nope. Falling out. Oh. Out of the top seat of the Ferris wheel. <laughs> Heavenly days. Was Bessie badly hurt? No, she was delighted, daughter. <laughs> she fell with her face in the cotton candy and they gave her a job as a bearded lady. <laughs> uh, Bessie's a sweet kid. <laughs> now, anyway. I can have a lot of fun in the carnival. I mind one time I was throwing darts at some balloons and a fat lady walked past. Yes, it sure are fun. <laughs> Bessie and me went to the Hall of Mirrors. Oh, that Hall of Mirrors. <laughs> what those things can do to your shape. You said it, daughter. Bessie never looked better. <laughs> I never quite understood, old-timer. Is, uh, is Bessie a daughter of the old South or just an old daughter of the South? Now, McGee. <laughs> See, uh, where did you ever meet her anyway, Mr. Old-timer? Well, old daughter, I was judge in a beauty contest down in Possum Choky, Alabama, and... Bessie won it hands down. Hands down, eh? She was scared to raise them. The elastic in her bathing suit bloomers was busted. <laughs> well, what was the contest? Oh, a whole bunch of planters was voting on the sugar they'd most like to raise cane with. <laughs> they named her Miss Blackstrap of 1914. <laughs> Incidentally, Johnny, that there painting of yours reminds me. Bessie's papa was a painter. He was? Good one, too. I remember one painting he'd done of the whole family standing around a vat full of moonshine. Sounds very effective. Uh, what did he call it? Still life. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to get down to the carnival to see Bessie, kids. So long. So long. Look, dearie. Huh? Let's call this whole Christmas card thing off, shall we? You're ruining your clothes and the living room is a sight. Yeah, I know, kiddo, I know. I, I've been kind of clumsy at it, but I'm getting the knack of it now. And... What's that noise? Sounds like something. Heavenly days, grab the glue, McGee. It's running off the table. Oh, my God. 
I got it. Oh, what a mess. And look, it went all over all the cards I had yes. done. Dead rat, the dead rat. They're all ruined. Oh, it's too bad. Dear, oh, dear. Come in. Hi, mister. <laughs> Hi, Miss McGee. Hello, sis. Run along with you. I'm in enough trouble. Well, I'm... now, don't take it out on Teeny McGee. I ain't taking it out on Teeny just because I make an unholy mess out of trying to make my own Christmas oh, cards. Gee. I guess if you make your own Christmas cards, you don't want to see these then, mister. So I'll just... Hey, 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 wait a minute. What was that you said? Who? You. When? Just now. About what? About I don't want to see those. That's what I thought. <laughs> these are just some ten-cent cards that I was trying to sell so I could make some money for Christmas, but... Well, if you make your own, I guess I... You got Christmas cards for sale? Come here, kid. I want to kiss you. Oh? <laughs> you want to buy, mister? How many? Hmm. How many you got, sis? About 30, I bet you. About 30, huh? I'll buy all of them. Oh, I'll kiss you. All right, sis. <laughs> there. Now give me the cards and I'll give you the dough. Boy, are these beautiful. Look at them, Molly. Lovely. So colorful. Mm -hmm. Such clever verses. Mm. How can them commercial companies turn out such beautiful stuff so cheap? Here, sis, here's three bucks. And thank you ever so much. What's the matter? Well, nothing, mister, only... I guess I better tell you. Huh? The reason they're so cheap is they've been used. <laughs> yeah, and the ones that have got writing on them, you'll have to erase. Mm. If you need any more, let me know. Our attic is just full of them. So long, mister. Hey, hey, Molly, hand me what's left of the glue. What are you going to do with it? Drink it. I've been stuck every other way. I might as well go the whole hog. Bibber and Molly return in a moment. Let me remind you again, there is now a self-polishing floor wax that is positively water repellent. It's Johnson's new glow coat. That means long-wearing protection for your floors. Freedom from ugly spots or drab streaks caused by water. Spill things, muddy footprints, melted snow, whisk right off that hard glow coat surface. Glow coat stays on, stays bright, even after repeated damp moppings. And this wonderful new water repellent quality means that glow coat's protective shine lasts up to four times longer. That's why glow coat is guaranteed to be the most economical self polishing wax you can buy. So tomorrow, get the smooth-spreading, self-shining floor wax that's positively water-repellent. No change in the glow coat package, remember, but what a wonderful difference inside. Ask for the new water-repellent glow coat tomorrow. Well, uh, McGee, what are you going to do for Christmas cards next year? Make your own again? Well, I ain't the type of guy that gives up easy, Tootsie. I'm strictly the type of guy that he makes up his mind to do something and I do it. So? So about December 1st next year, I'm going to the art store, buy a lot of paint and cardboard and brushes. Oh, no, not that. And paint a big sign for the front door. Welcome, Christmas card salesman. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's new water-repellent glow coat, Racine, Wisconsin, and Brantford, Canada, bring you Fibber, McGee, and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you? Here's a time-saving way to keep your furniture sparkling clean and shining bright with almost no effort. Tomorrow, start using Johnson's Cream Wax, the fastest wax furniture polish money can buy. Johnson's Cream Wax cleans so quickly, dries so quickly, polishes so quickly, that using it is almost as easy as dusting. A few strokes of a cloth do the cleaning, a few more polish your furniture to a satiny smoothness. And this wax contains no sticky oils to catch dust. Tomorrow, start using the fastest wax furniture polish money can buy. Get Johnson's Cream Wax at your dealers. Stay tuned for Big Town, coming to you next on NBC.